welcome to Transparency with Zeb King. I would like to welcome our guest for this evening, Peggy Wilmot, to our show. Welcome. Thank you. And uh, I thought we would be again first by getting to know you, Peggy, a little bit, uh, okay. if that's okay. Sure. Um, and then the viewers can uh, find out about the organization that you're involved with as well. Okay. Um, so I think it's correct that uh, you are trained as a teacher, is yes. that correct? Exactly. I think I heard you say that at mm -hmm. a meeting. Um, and so uh, you obviously you were a teacher in the, I'm assuming the Victoria area, is that correct or maybe not? I, mean, I, I came out to Victoria okay. in 1983 right. to be the headmistress of Norfolk House School. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, I Which, after a time, uh, we amalgamated with Glen Lyon. Oh, right, yeah. okay. And so what grades uh, is, that, or is that? It's K-12. K-12, yeah, and you've taught? I teach French. So I've French. Every, yeah, I've That's taught right. every grade level, you know, throughout. Fantastic. I didn't know that. Well, uh, <laughs> French is a passion of mine as well. Oh, I, well. I went to Quebec and immerse myself to learn some. Yes. So yes, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, that's wonderful. Uh, I, I lived in France for a year with wow. a family. I was an au pair girl. Uh huh. Very long time ago. For a year? Yeah. And that's the best way to really get a language, isn't it, to be immersed? I absolutely, think, yeah. absolutely. Yes, yes I, I figured I'd finally made it when um, my, the maman in the family came into my room when I was asleep to turn off my heater. And apparently, she told me in the morning, I spoke to her in French, in my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's that funny. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I think that was sort of the moment. It was about Christmas time when I was thinking fully in French. <laughs> Wonderful, yeah. Um, so you've lived in Victoria for a while, and mm -hmm. uh, in the Oak Bay area, I guess, is sort of your... Right, well, I could call it Fairfield. Fairfield, yeah. Oak Bay. So, yeah, I was curious to know uh, your thoughts on on activism, um, there you know some people feel that the word activism they're afraid to call themselves an, an, an activist. How do you feel about that title? Would you call yourself an activist? I think I'm more of an advocate than an activist. Mm -hmm. um, after I took early retirement from the school, um, I started working with a group called Faith in Action, which was a multi-faith group doing advocacy, basically, for people living in poverty. It was very interesting, because there were people from all different religions. Mm. And we came together and um, did all sorts of thoughtful things, some of them slightly outrageous, mostly not too oh, outrageous. Oh, that's, that's kind of interesting. Well, you know, marching and <laughs> okay, marching. standing on steps. And Taking a stand for various Taking a things. stand, always for things to do with poverty, mm. um, homelessness, that sort of thing. Okay. And, and the multiple faiths, would they all be Christian faiths? Or oh, no. Were, no, those no, were, no, um, there were lots of support from the Jewish community, for oh, example. Yeah. And uh, certainly Nazriani of the uh, Ismaili Muslims was oh, yeah. involved. People from his Jamaat Kana. Well, yeah. uh, that, that's fa fascinating because, uh, particularly right now, where we now have in the world uh, a newly elected president who, you know, Donald Trump, who, and there's a, a been nonstop for the past number of weeks uh, uh, in the news uh, concern about the immigration mm -hmm. issue. Um, and uh, so, yeah. Um, Polarization through mm -hmm. uh, different uh, uh, religious faiths, I think, um, and um, yeah, it's it's troubling, but uh, it's nice to hear when people can come together. I think we um, always tend to fear that which is unknown, mm -hmm. and so I think you just have to make a an opportunity to reach out and get to know individual mm -hmm. people, and then they're not scared. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so that kind of brings us up to uh, what I hope we can talk about with regards to your work with, with the this organization. And I've written Greater Victoria Acting Together for the Common Good, or is that correct? Yep. Because mm -hmm. the acronym is GVAT, right? Right. The acronym is GVAT, but people are going to say Greater Victoria Acting Together. And we were doing a display board at a big event, Creatively United for the Planet, and someone came along and asked us if we were a drama troupe. 
Oh. Because of the acting together. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> so we have to have a little tagline that says for the common good, and that right. tends to give a slightly better picture of what it is that we're and trying you, to create. It's a society, mm -hmm. uh, of course. So, okay. <clears throat> uh, and, and the first question is, what is this group? What is this? Well, it's nascent. It hasn't been born yet. <laughs> but it, it actually at. hasn't? Yeah. Well, it is a society, yes. Okay. But... Um, Oh my, there's so much to tell you. Okay, so it is a group of organizations who have agreed to come together and find shared priorities that they want to work on that relate to the common good. Okay, so when the viewer hears that, will how will they get a sense that it's actually, uh, they, they might want to, they will need to work on um, talking about something more concrete, because that sounds... You're going to guess me lots more questions, I'm yes, sure. Yes, <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, for, for the common good, they wonder, what, what is that? And, and uh, groups of people that come together to do things for the common good, is that like shovel driveways, or is it, is it like uh, with Probably snow Probably a storms? little bigger than that. Well, mind you, with the recent <laughs> snowstorms, that's not so, not so facetious after all. Um, no, it's, the, it's those intractable problems that we we seem to be facing all the time it's yeah. things like it's big things like climate change and poverty okay. and homelessness immigration immigration the could be one concern that's being discussed uh, with the you know um, concern in the United States would they would mm -hmm. that be something that, that the organization would involve itself with in any way it could be and, and I'm not trying to be um, Evasive. No. The idea is that when we have a, a critical mass of organizations, which could be as many as 30, let's say, from different sectors like faith communities, like local locals of labor unions, like educational mm -hmm. institutions, like um, all sorts of different NGOs, climate groups, and so on, when they come together, then they will. Um, Say, all right, we want to be part of GVAT, we're prepared to join, we're prepared to work hard, and these are the priorities that our members have asked us to bring forward. So there's another step in there. You can't just say, oh, well, I want to be part of GVAT, and my pet mm -hmm. peeve is whatever, and I'm going to bring that forward. I represent an organization, and I've gone back and I've listened to the members of my organization. What are our priorities? What do you want me to bring to the table on your behalf? Okay. Right, right, right. So then mm -hmm. all the organizations who come together, and there might be, as I said, let's pick a number like 30, would have a vote, and or maybe three votes, say what are your top three from your organization, and then really it's just a question of the democratic process, mm -hmm. of choosing three or four top focal points, because mm -hmm. we can't fix everything all at once. Right. Is that that process already established or being pro uh, established? Uh, I mean, it, it just seems that um, it is a society already yeah. uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, I, and I understand that it could include um, religious or faith groups, faith groups. Um, uh, labor, yeah. and, and the third would be well, Action. NGOs, NGO. NGOs of, of any kind, really, nonprofits who are working together right. already. Okay. Um, so there are there are climate groups who are very keen, who mm. already are meeting together and dying for us to get up and get going. Okay. Um, it could be our place is very you know supportive of what we're doing. So it's direct service organizations. It's other lobby groups who are working in their own little silos, and they're all saying. We're working in our own little silos, and it's not being as effective as we would like it to be. We need a bigger voice. So how do you, this was a question I had about, um, is it duplicating what other groups do already? And in a sense, obviously, I don't think there is another group that tries to be an umbrella for all, or, or, yeah. or like a federation of, if this is sort of like yeah. that. So I don't think there is a group like this in the Victoria area yet. Uh, as you say, many groups are uh, arguably kind of maxed out, busy, uh, and and how will this not take more time and more, uh, you know, so how, how does it work for them? Well, 
um, this is not just something that we've just come up with in Victoria. You know, okay. There are many of these alliances around the world. There Good are know, between yeah. 60 and 70 that already exist. So we're not just making it up as we go along. We're learning mm -hmm. from them. So indeed, it sounds like it might be more work to begin with. But what it does is it helps you achieve what it is that you're trying to do more effectively because you've got more power. Mm -hmm. So when you go to the politicians with a request, because we're now setting the agenda, as opposed to reacting with protests or petitions or whatever, we're saying, we've looked into the problem of, okay, climate change. And one of the things that we would like you to do, for instance, could be, I have to be very careful because we haven't picked these yet, um, to commit to being 100% renewable as a municipal council. Commit to that by such and such a date. Doesn't solve the whole issue of climate change, but it makes a difference. As people, I want to say it moves the needle. I don't yeah. like that expression very much, but it kind of says what we're trying to do. Right. We can't solve it all, but we can make a difference. And as you say, there are many other groups in, in, in the world that have formed in this way and do this work. Mm -hmm. And do they have to, all these many groups that are part of, do they have to come up with a unanimous agreement or somehow they have a vote, a majority, that, to decide that that's well, the issue that they're going to champion? To begin with, you need, you need a focus. You, you can't just have 30 groups who come together and say, well, I want to do this, I want to do yeah, that. You've got yeah. to say, okay, where, what are our shared priorities? What can we all agree on? And there's one little caveat that says, you can't choose a topic that would cause a group to leave. There's a real commitment to working together as a big, strong group. So if you wanted to choose some topic um, that you're passionate about, but it would cause another group to leave, it doesn't mean you can't keep working on that issue mm -hmm. on your own, mm -hmm. but it's not going to be an issue that GVAT will take on. And, yet, and so I, I take your word for it that they've managed to find issues that they all agree on in oh, different parts of the world. Absolutely. Uh, so Vancouver is our closest example. Now, okay. I know Victoria is not Vancouver and everybody's quick to say and I acknowledge that, but I'll just take Vancouver as sure. an example. And they did this process and went back and everybody listened to inside their organizations, found out what the priorities were, came together, did a vote, I've seen the chart, you know, that shows how many people voted for each of the topics. Uh -huh. And it came to um, that homelessness, poverty, transit, those are the top three, su superseded only by a complete surprise candidate, and that was social isolation. So yeah, you, so with regards to the Vancouver uh, Association, mm -hmm. um, how many various organizations are part of that? There are about 70 organizations so now. Within the Vancouver one, I yeah, mean. Yeah. Oh, really? 70? Yeah, we're presenting members. almost, I think it's 300,000 people. Really? Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. That, that's quite incredible. So when they speak, the decision makers tend to listen. Hmm. I have that's stories I can tell you of I'm things they've done. Well, that's, that's fascinating in and of itself. The the issues and the, 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 the decision makers listen and one can see that, uh, yes, I would love to hear the story for that. The, how it functions, how it operates is also another uh, fascinating thing. I'm just trying to imagine how they <laughs> can well, do it. But, uh, yeah. But well, clearly, each organization uh, has a seat at the leadership yeah. table. Yeah. So that means there are Presumably 70 people, so they have to have some pretty oh. good processes that yes. I haven't ever observed firsthand. We won't be that many, so it might be easier. So, um, when, when they've chosen their four, mm -hmm. as it turned out, they don't just go running off in all directions and decide what, what they're going to do. They strike something called a research action team. And the research action team's very important responsibility is to say, okay, what winnable action could we ask for? Because we're setting the agenda now. We're not letting the decision makers or the politicians set the agenda. We are. What winnable action could we, would, would solve, help solve this problem? 
So they do lots of research, talk to city staff, talk to experts yep. in the field, where, whatever the topic is, and then eventually come up with a winnable action. Mm. So when they have that action, so they then, I, I saw wonderful examples. I'll tell you the story that I saw Please. firsthand. Yeah. <clears throat> so the problem in North Van, North and West Van of lack of housing is even more acute than in Vancouver and Victoria. It is really critical. So they did a lot of research and found people who've been renovated, people living in their cars. I mean, some really terrible situations in North and West Van. To the point that some of the infrastructure was threatened because nurses couldn't live in North Van and work in the hospital and the doctors and the paramedics and the mm -hmm. firemen. It, this, it was critical. So they discovered that there were several pieces of municipal land that were just lying vacant. So they went to the mayors long before anything was public and they said, this is our concern. There's 300,000 of us representing all these different groups. We would like you to commit to setting some of that land aside in a land trust to build below market housing. Mm -hmm. so, well, that's actually quite a good idea. Well, if he'll do it, I'll do it. I, I don't know. I'm imagining that part now, but I think something like that. And then they went to the MP for Sea to Sky, who happened to be a liberal, and asked her if she would commit to advocating for the spending of infrastructure money on the housing that would be built on this free land. Mm -hmm. And she said, absolutely. Okay, so this is all happening mm -hmm. behind closed doors, basically. So then, the part that's exciting and that really shows the power of the group is they have what they call um, an action. All representatives from all the member organizations came together the three mayors are on the stage, as is the MP, and then they're asked this question publicly, are you prepared to set aside municipal land? And every one of them said, yes. And they asked the MP, are you prepared? And she said, yes, to set aside, I advocate for the money being set aside. Then the next question they said was, can we come and see you in 45 days and find out how you're doing? Oops, yep, okay, I guess so. And the next question was, how can Metro Vancouver Alliance help? And that was a great question. And the mayors all said, well, we're only one vote on council. So you can come to the council meetings and show the support mm -hmm. that is from this vast array mm -hmm. of 300,000 people. Mm -hmm. And they weren't all there in the room, but representatives of all the groups were. Well, that gives people a sense of power in a good way. Yeah. A, a sense of agency. I actually can do yeah. something to make a difference. And, and I'd argue it's actually appropriate. It's, it's citizens, people yes. participating yes. in their government. Exactly. And their, yeah, as it should be. Yeah. As it should right. be. You know, too many people wander around with great big long faces saying, oh, you can't right. play City Hall. Well, if you get together with enough other people, mm -hmm. and there, you have to be pretty wise to find those winnable actions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the process uh, now that I I'm getting too. a better sense of yeah. it because you're working together to find what you really want to do and where and there's a consensus. The agenda. And yeah. yeah. Um, fa fascinating, yeah. I can tell you another story. Oh, please. Do another yeah. story? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Is this also about Vancouver? Or? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <coughs> well, because we don't, we haven't formed yet. But yeah, we okay. will. Yeah. Um, social isolation, what does that mean? So many groups came and said, we're concerned, our members feel isolated. So they had to dig a little deeper, and they found that that meant one particular area of social isolation was immigrant seniors who were isolated in their homes while their children were at work, their grandchildren were at school. They didn't speak English. There were two-year waiting lists for ESL classes, and these people, the grandparents, had been functioning contributing members of their community before they moved. And they were not liking being at home alone, feeling like they weren't contributing. So when MVA learned about this, I, the group that was doing the research into it said... MVA is the... Event. Metro Vancouver oh, Alliance, yeah. Oh, right, Thanks. okay. So when they were doing their research into that problem and found out who it was, they just looked at each other and said, well, this is an easy one to solve. 
I used to be an ESL teacher. We've got a spare space at our church. Well, what about the union offices? Couldn't you have a group there? And before you knew it, they'd set up all these free conversation classes that people are coming to once a week, getting together with other members of their community, learning some basic English, and feeling not isolated anymore. And it didn't cost a penny. Love it, a love it too. Story. I know. Yeah, I know. yeah, yeah. The power of working together. Yeah community building in action. Yeah. 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 Wow. yeah, it's exciting. It is. When does this Victoria group get up and running as a fully functional? Oh, I wish I knew does the answer. <laughs> I wish I knew the yeah. answer. It's a, one of the things that's very important, and we remind ourselves frequently of this, is that it's based on relationships. It's not just, all right, you, come on, I want you to join. I, I, want, you, I want to know about you. I want you to know about my organization. I want you to know about these organizations over here, so that when we run into a rocky patch, there's a good relationship that mm -hmm. we're, mm -hmm. we're coming from, and we'll be able to figure out how to solve it. So that takes time. You can't just build relationships mm -hmm. overnight. Mm -hmm. we've, got, we've got lots of groups that are interested, and, and quite a few of them are just sitting out there saying, tell us when you're ready, when uh -huh. you're ready, and we'll be there. Uh -huh. We're working to get some of the labor unions involved. That's right. and that was the question I had as to, uh, with regards to those three segments, I suppose, of um, mm -hmm. faith groups, labor, and um, NGOs, etc. Um, is it about equal? Is it about well, we want to do our best to see that it is equal, so that's why we're taking yeah. our time. We've got lots of faith groups who are saying, let's go. That's partly because this was really started by Faith in Action, this multi-faith oh. group that was doing advocacy, right, and marching on the legislature oh, okay. and doing all those things. So that's who started, really, who started GVAT. Okay, right. And now we're, because we're saying we can't do it just as faith communities, we need more partners. Mm -hmm. And we found out, found this model in Vancouver, and Seattle, and Sydney, Australia, and London, England, and, you know, all over the world, there are alliances like this. So. We have a lot of faith connections, so those are the easy ones for us, and we are having to work more at some of the other sectors. Are they all linked around the world, or are they yep. totally? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Really yeah, 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 yeah. So there's the potential to reach out and learn from each other. Well, as we are doing. Yeah. Ah, good. Yeah, exactly. Good. The big question that I had thought up was, um, why is this work necessary, uh, and? Um, why you, why have you, and this sort of relates to the beginning, uh, talking about where you come from and uh, why you feel so passionately and, and why you, and clearly this is, this is time consuming or in, you have to invest in it yeah. and, uh, and you're willing to do that. So I'm curious to know what drives you. Well, good question. Um, I'm a member of St. John's and we have a large food bank there. Actually, it's my privilege to be the coordinator of the food bank. All volunteers, all donated money. We serve about 5,000 people in a year. It's a huge job. And I would say that's my downstream work. I can't stop running the food bank because there are all those people who desperately need food. But I say to myself, why? Why in a wealthy country, in a wealthy city like ours, do we have so many people who have to come to a food bank? So how do you fix... It's the old metaphor, you know, about mopping the floor or fixing the hole in the roof. Well, you kind of have to do both. You can't just abandon the floor to the water while you're fixing the hole in the roof. But you're kind of silly if you just keep mopping the floor and you never try to fix the hole. Yeah. So GVAP, I hope, is going to work at fixing the hole in the roof. I've thought of this as well, that over the many years there's been talk about it, you know, giving to a food bank, doing the right thing, etc. But there just seems to be uh, a need to talk about one day where we won't need food banks. Absolutely. Um, and yet it's become um, sort of so entrenched in the norm, uh, as opposed to thinking of imagining and trying to get it out of ever needing. Well, well, Faith in Action, back to the original sure. group, um, did a whole series of presentations in a number of different venues 
called Imagine a Community Where Food Banks Are No, no Longer Necessary. We started to call it Imagine a Community Without Food Banks, and all our clients got all upset because they said, you can't close the food banks. Right. So we had to change it and say, where food banks aren't necessary, so it would be okay <laughs> if we closed it. Uh, I hear you, yeah. Yeah, so we, we've been down that road. Okay. And what would that take? Well, one of the things that happened in Vancouver, another story, was that eventually Gregor Robertson declared the city of Vancouver to be a living wage employer and all their contractors. Well, what a concept. What does that mean? Living wage? Oh. For people who are wondering, what does that mean? Okay, living, a living wage is something that's calculated every year based on the cost of living very modestly in that, neighbor, in that city. So in Vancouver, it's higher than Victoria, but not much. Mm -hmm. In Kamloops, it might be considerably less because the cost of housing is less and transportation could be less because you don't have to go so far. Mm -hmm. So there's a basket that they calculate. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's what's the living wage. And Vancouver's done that for their employees. For their, all the employees of the city of Vancouver yep. and all their contractors. So if uh -huh. they're hiring and some, the yeah, they have to all pay a living wage. Mm -hmm. Well, it didn't solve poverty, right. but it's made a difference to those people, some of whom might, be, might have been visiting food banks before. If they can earn a living wage, they should have to visit a food I bank. think it's one of the Scandinavian countries they recently heard is, is uh, contemplating this on a larger scale. A guaranteed annual income, yeah, uh -huh. that's right. Yeah. Now we have to set our sights reasonably because we're Greater Victoria, we're not Greater British Columbia, so we really can't yet lobby the provincial government mm -hmm. who sets things like income assistance rates oh. and disability rates and so on. We only, so far, are able to set our sights on the local politicians. Okay. But, well, you know, if there's, there's Victoria, there. if there's Vancouver, um, if there's Kelowna, perhaps, you know, eventually if there are enough cities where there are alliances like GVAT, mm -hmm. then we could all come mm -hmm. together and lobby the provincial government. Mm -hmm. Set some agenda items there. But right now we're, we're keeping our sights on Greater Victoria. Uh -huh. Wow. And a lot of busy people doing this work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can mm -hmm. just imagine, yeah. Um, so for people that are interested, how can they find out more about the about GVAT and um, get possibly get involved if they're interested? Oh, in that would be how, fantastic. How can they? Okay, we have a website. Oh, okay. Which is easy to remember because it's www.gvat.ca. Gvat. Gvat.ca. Mm -hmm. um, what the normal process is if you learn if you hear a little bit about it and you're interested. Contact us, one of us will go for coffee, find out about your organization, tell you a little bit more about us, and then we have what we call house meetings, where in various people's houses we bring 10 or 12, however many seats you have in your living room, people together, mm -hmm. and it's kind of like a little mini GVAT, so there might be some labor union people, and there might be some paid community people, and it might be, just depends on who all we've had coffee with in the past two or three weeks, and we always try to get more than one person from an organization because it's really hard if you're all alone. So mm -hmm. say I have coffee with you mm -hmm. and I say, oh, are you interested? What about your organization? And you say, well, I can think of a couple of other people in the organization who would really th like to learn more. So I'll say, well, why don't you, because now you've already had coffee with me, we have a relationship, why don't you bring those two people with you to a house meeting? So now there's going to be three people from your organization who know about it, mm -hmm. who might be able to get together and talk about it and say, what can we do? I think we should, you know, and away it goes from there. Uh, uh, so it's, it's, on, it's built on relationships. And that part, that part's underway. Oh, that part that, is underway. I have had yeah. more coffee dates in the last year. <laughs> um, it's been fantastic. <laughs> well, no, but I've just met sure. so many wonderful, wonderful people. And it isn't a fit for everybody. But right. it is a fit for lots of people who care about the common good and who want to work together. That's very good. Well, Peggy, I want to thank you very much for coming on our show. Hi, Chia Sien. Oh. And uh, thank you. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs>